I'm Bigantia Blackbeard of the Blackbird Grimoire. Welcome to the Daily Forecast for Wednesday, May 29th, 2024. Good morning to you and happy Mercury's Day. We have a waning gibbous moon. We are in the Gemini season, the Celtic tree month of Hawthorne, deer season, and Pluto retrograde. Today, the sun is in the sign of Gemini, mutable air representing communication. The moon begins the day, third quarter, Aquarius, fixed air representing stubbornness. Then at 9.20 a.m. Central Time, it goes void of course. And then at 7.33 p.m. Central Time, it enters third quarter, Pisces, a mutable water sign representing artistry. Mercury is in Taurus, fixed earth representing practicality. Venus is in Gemini, mutable air representing the spendthrift. Mars is in Aries, a cardinal fire sign representing initiative. Initiative. Jupiter is in Gemini, a mutable air representing uh, questing. Saturn is in Pisces, mutable water representing nostalgia. Uranus is in Taurus, fixed earth representing practicality. Neptune is in Pisces, mutable water representing imagination. Pluto is retrograde Aquarius, fixed air, meaning we need to examine our intentions and remember the Pluto retrograde mantra. Reflect, heal, and evolve. For the waning gibbous moon, remember to release, banish, and journal. And for the Pisces moon that will go into this evening, uh, the do's are retreat, meditate, and cleanse. The don'ts are over socializing, being one dimensional, or associate with people indiscriminately. So on this day of Mercury, today the Taurian Mercury will encourage us to work diligently at our jobs, projects, and hobbies, and we may find ourselves better able to focus if we're working independently due to the Piscean moon later this evening. Uh, don't fight this urge to retreat and lurk within. Allow the quiet creativity to flow. Then our tarot card for today is the Knave of Pentacles, and it represents simple pleasures, experimentation, and health. Uh, taking joy in the everyday, that goes a long way towards being a happier, more contented person. Uh, experimenting uh, sometimes, uh, satisfying our curiosity, just seeing if something will work. Uh, that also can give us a great deal of joy because if it works, if it doesn't work, sometimes it's just nice to go through that process and to know that you have some confidence in yourself to where you actually can go through that process instead of ring in your hands about whether or not you'll get the expected results or the results that you want. And uh, on the matter of health, uh, we, there's a need to actually cultivate our health. I mean, there's a lot of disturbing things coming out about, you know, how our foods are processed and, and you know, what's in there and, and surprising uh, additives that you don't know really why they're there in our food to begin with. And it, and it can make a person really very concerned and it affects, you know, how we're able to maintain our health, uh, how we're able to uh, really regulate our food intake, you know, even what kind of exercise will be effective for us. Uh, there's a lot of different moving parts on it, and there seems to be a growing emphasis on, on the health aspect. And I'm not talking about these people of, unless you are a perfectly fit in form of, and, you know, 10 like me, you are a worthless human being. Yeah, I'm not talking about those assholes. Uh, they are, uh, <laughs> I, I find them just as destructive as the people uh, who uh, advocate for a complete neglect of health. Uh, I'm talking about actual well-being. And uh, in addition to the physical health, thinking about our mental and our emotional well-being, uh, we do need to be informed about what goes on in the world, but if it is making us physically ill, maybe we need to look at uh, what kind of contact we are taking in. And is this really about us being informed about what's going on or are we listening to a bunch of doomsayers who are not actually offering any kind of possible solutions that we could pursue to meet the challenges that we're experiencing in this age? You know, you can take a great deal of stress if you say, I'm working towards a solution. This thing is going on, but I'm the way I'm living my life is a countercurrent to that thing. There's a lot we can actually do in staying focused upon solutions and what we can do. And then again, just appreciating the good things that we can have in our lives, no matter what our circumstances, that goes a long way towards being a healthier per person. Today's Celtic triad reads, there are three things which lay waste the world, a king without counsel, a judge without conscience, and a son without reverence. 
So a ruler who never takes advice or, or takes the wrong advice is unlikely to have the necessary length and breadth of perception to make wise and suitable decisions. And then if you happen to have a ruler who is malicious on top of that, it almost doesn't matter who's advising them because everything they're doing is going to be motivated out of that malevolence. And uh, it just, the, the, the consequences are tragic. And I don't have to tell you, we can just look around ourselves, what's going on in our country and countries around the world. Uh, there's a lot of this. We do have rulers without counsel. We have a lot of maliciousness and deliberate malevolence going on in the world. And uh, we are feeling the effects of it. Then uh, a judge without conscience. Uh, a judge that doesn't have a conscience is the very worst of criminals in my book and will actively pervert the course of justice. And when you, you see judges... Um, you compare what they should be doing to the Constitution and established law, and then you look at what they actually are doing, and you can see how it uh, creates a lot of problems. And then when they treat people of different political affiliations differently, that creates massive problems. I mean, that that destroys one of the few vestiges of the structure of our society that we have. I mean, if we do not even have the courts, uh, then we are on a, a verge of some pretty dangerous times. Uh, then the son without reverence, you know, a, a child that does not respect their loving parents. And I want to emphasize loving parents because the first thing people do when you talk about this sort of thing is, well, what if the parents were abusive? What if this or this or that? Blah, 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 blah. When unless specifically specified, we are talking about parents who are loving and doing their duty to the best of their ability. Uh, we, uh, you know, on this channel, I'm going to treat you know abuse as the exception, not the rule, because there there is no way to actually talk about these things in a sensible fashion if we're going around assuming that the worst possible case scenario is just what's absolutely normal all the time. There, there's no way to do that. So a child that doesn't respect their loving parents and they're rejecting their guidance, uh, they are not going to be very successful. Uh, they are going to be making decisions that have very poor impact upon their own uh, future that reflect badly on the family. And that is actively making the community a worse place to live. So it does matter uh, how people are raising their children. And it matters whether or not the children are responding to good upbringing. It matters whether or not we have judges and other public officials that are actually upholding the law in an impartial fashion, rather than in a way that suits their own personal prejudices. And it matters the people who have and wield political power, what kind of people are they and what voice are they listening to? Uh, you want to talk about, you know, why is the world in the state that it's in? Well, this is why. It's because all of the three of these things are in existence right now and they have not been properly dealt with yet. Now, today's magical intention, uh, after we get over the rough edges of our triad of the day, that magical intention is nurture because we do need a bit of nurturing in our lives. Uh, the color for this is brown. The plant is the mullein. The animal is the dog. And I found the cutest little puppy I possibly could uh, to represent the dog in this. And the crystal is the uh, aragonite. Uh, so the question of is really what nurtures your spirit? How do you nurture those who care about you? Because once you are taking care of yourself, you should use that energy to also be nurturing the people who matter to you. And they, of course, should be doing that back. I, I, I believe relationships really do need to be a two-way street. If it's only one-sided, I mean, it doesn't take long before uh, people become emotionally ill or when the situation actually does become abusive. So it has to be going both ways. For today's pagan practice, uh, I also found uh, a little uh, tarot spread that for you to try out if you like to read the cards. Uh, but for the practice in general, uh, you might honor a deity associated with divination today. You could lay out a spread focused on your intentions for the summer season. Uh, I would suggest doing grounding meditations today. Also journal about any kind of nudges you've been feeling lately and uh, carry a piece of fluorite. Uh, the reason why I recommend fluorite is because I found it very helpful when I want to have my senses just a little bit more open and a little bit more clear for those nudges so that I, I'm getting the point, I, I'm understanding the message, and I can take appropriate action. Now for today's journal prompt, uh, brainstorm the ideal, in your opinion, hand fasting ceremony. Be as specific as your imagination allows. Uh, you never know when you might find yourself in the position of presiding over a pagan wedding, so it's uh, just as well to be prepared. And that's what I have for you guys today. Uh, let me know what you think about all this in the comments below or send me an email at brigantiablackbird at protonmail.com. I'd be happy to chat with you there. Uh, but that'll do it for now, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye. Bye. <laughs>